Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning, everyone. It is 7 a.m. and it is June 30th, the last day of the month of June. I'm Nicole Nalepa with your top stories. Our top story this morning is the weather. We're going to send it right over to Scott. He has the latest on our early warning weather alert. And it could be a rough day weather-wise, not just because of the heat, right? That's right, Nicole. It's going out like a lion uh, this month of June. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are expecting some strong storms this afternoon through this evening. The Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma, they decide who's, uh, you know, they do the the prognostication of who's expected to get the uh, severe weather and boy have they done it this time they've placed uh, Massachusetts in the enhanced category this is something we very rarely see even portions of northern Connecticut being clipped with the enhanced category so that's level three level two is the yellow which is bad enough level one is for uh, New Jersey and further south. But uh, unfortunately, we're right in the middle of this, and that means the threat for strong storms this afternoon through this evening. Gusty winds, the, the possibility of hail, just not a great afternoon. Winds could gust in excess of 50 to 70 miles an hour. So bring in that patio furniture and the kids' toys because you don't want them flying around. All right, our Channel 3 early warning radar scans the state dry. You going to the beach today? UV index is a 9. Just make sure you have a safe haven to get to when the event showers and thunderstorms roll through. The temperatures range between 80, <clears throat> excuse me, 84 and 95 degrees in Norwalk. That is a warm day, even at the shoreline. Waterbury right now, 70, so look at it, we got a three-way tie. I wish that would come up on a slot machine at Foxwoods, but 77 in Waterbury, 77 in Brantford, 77 in Norwich, but it feels like it's in the low 80s, right? All right, take a look at Old Saybrook. We have a mariner out there enjoying the beautiful water and the beautiful sunrise this morning. More of the same in Hartford, 78 degrees in Hartford, 79 in New Haven, one away from 80, and it's 7.02 in the morning. Those numbers are going to take off once again. Now the temperatures again, 79 New Haven, 78 Brainerd, 77 Bradley, 76 Waterbury, 75 Norwich, 74 Torrington, 73 in Putnam, 72 in Salisbury, 71 in Willimantic. So we're covered with the 70s. Now the dew points are also in the low 70s, which is downright oppressive. Not too much of a heat index right now. I mean a degree or two warmer in certain locations. You'll notice it feels like 80 at Brainerd, 82 in New Haven, and 82 in Danbury. But later, these heat indices are going to be moving up into the uh, 98 to 105 degree range. So another day just like yesterday. All right, so there's the uh, mugginess. Uh, you can see it through the day. Now then the storms, it'll drop back and then it goes right back up. Tomorrow a little bit better, still muggy, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, some relief, but it does get wetter. All right, here's uh, Futurecast heat index values. Look at this, 102 to 103 to possibly 104 later on this afternoon. This is around 115, so brace yourselves for another day of heat and humidity. Temperatures today will soar into the mid to upper 90s. There's 96 by 3 p.m. and more of the same for the shoreline. This is basically for southeast Connecticut. The further west you go, the warmer the numbers get. So remember, keep your eyes to the skies. If they look threatening, head indoors. Temperatures today will uh, top out in the low to mid 90s. Heat wave day number four with strong storms expected. More storms expected tomorrow with bouts of heavy rain in the state as the front is stalled nearby. Friday, more wet weather. Saturday, a chance for showers. Not a washout, but there certainly is a mostly cloudy sky on Saturday with a chance for showers. And Sunday, also a slight chance for showers under partly sunny skies for July 4th. All right, 704. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Connecticut's eviction moratorium expires today, giving landlords the ability to evict tenants for the first time in more than 14 months. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Roger Suzanne explains what this means for the housing market. Property owners tell us they have lost tens of thousands of dollars in the past year in lost rent and damaged property. But after 14 months, the eviction ban finally ends today. All the tenants are struggling. But it's, it's a two-sided coin here. We're all struggling. Renters still have some options. The state has millions of dollars in rental relief being distributed through a program called Unite CT, where up to $15,000 is available in assistance. And the federal moratorium remains in place through the end of July. But tenants must prove their income loss and that they've applied for other government relief programs to qualify. It's a process they must advocate for themselves and kind of... Uh, submit a declaration. 
uh, that says they qualify for it and then bring that to their landlord's attention. Professor Brendan Holt you know, runs the Homelessness the Mitigation Mediation Project at Quinnipiac way. Law School through Unite CT. He says the best path for landlords and tenants is to try to reach a compromise before heading to court. They make a little bit more peace with an unfortunate situation. Roger Suzanin, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Breaking overnight in New Britain, where police are investigating after a person was struck and killed by a car on E Street last night. Now, we know the street is back open this morning, but we are still working to get you more details on this story. So we'll be sure to update you as soon as the information comes into our newsroom. And Eyewitness News is your vaccine authority. Today is the last day to get a vaccine at some of the state's mass vaccination sites. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Aaron Edwards tells us about the new ways vaccines will be distributed to our community. Six months and 500,000 vaccines later, Hartford HealthCare is closing the doors on their convention center vaccine clinic. This comes nine days after they closed their mass vaccination sites in New Britain and Torrington. But this closure doesn't mean vaccine availability is decreasing. Hartford HealthCare will be ramping up mobile efforts and working to bring the vaccine to the community. These vaccine site changes come as Governor Lamont announced he wants to improve the vaccination rate as the new COVID variant continues to spread nationwide. The CDC says the Delta variant now accounts for about one in every five new COVID cases. And with the Delta variant on the rise, many are wondering if we could be seeing pandemic restrictions make a comeback in Connecticut. That's my answer. Do I have to wear a mask? What are the contingency plans about this? If we can get another 10% of our population vaccinated, I'm not worried. Aaron Edwards, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. We bring you to Surfside, Florida now, where crews begin day seven of searching through the rubble of that collapsed condo building. The death toll has risen to 12, with 149 people still unaccounted for. Authorities have asked the government for additional rescue teams, as two storm systems in the Atlantic could pose a severe weather threat to Florida and hamper search efforts. Meantime, we're learning the condo board president warned about the building's safety in a letter she wrote back in April. President Biden and the First Lady will head to Surfside tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on that Channel 3 app, and that app is going to prove to be extra handy for you as we look ahead to the hot temperatures and that threat for severe weather Scott was talking about. Stay cool out there, be healthy, and stay positive. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.